Booting up system. Loading. Gabriel Valentin. Loading. Dan Brozo. This is the Digital Lizards of Doom show live at Meltdown. Ducks, 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 We're not doing the Mighty Ducks. I thought we were doing d Lodge show, like Mighty Ducks style, but obviously for d Lodge. Yeah. Hey, I'm getting a weird call right now. Should I answer it live on the show? Yeah, let's do it. Hello? Hello. It is urgent that you verify your Google Plus page. I hate. <laughs> yeah. You start one business and then you get a million calls from SEO people. Anyways, want to just go ahead and get to comic books? Yeah, let's get to comic books. We have a pretty epic show today. Who's our guest today? Angelic Magica. So pretty tight. sick. Yeah, it's gonna we're be gonna sweet. show you the trailer for their for their short film. Gonna get some inside info. Dude, they're, they drove yeah. down from LA. Yeah, oh, they're driving down right now. They're driving down right now. Yeah, so they're gonna be here. Tight. Yeah, let's right. get into it. Let's do it. Let's talk about Dizzy Dooms Comic Boom Comic Book Time. <laughs> You ready to talk about comic books, Gabriel? Yes, I am, Daniel Brozo. I'm going to take off my sunglasses for Me this. Me too. Because this is like serious, serious business. Um, all right, Ooh. so I know it looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah. We'll talk about it in a second. <laughs> um, so as always, we're using the Comics Fix app, which we both highly recommend you go get. Right now. We're going to have some kind of... If you get uh, it right now, you can read these along with us. Yeah. Dun, 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 we're going to have some kind of a uh, code in the future mm-hmm. where you can get some kind of discount, some kind of sick deal. We're in the works. We're talking to them right yeah. now about it. So. Absolutely. Type in D-Lodge Show. At when some it, point. When it happens. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I shouldn't even say anything because now <laughs> people are going to be like, well, I should wait to get it then. You <laughs> no, do don't it, wait. Do what you got to do. Um, all right. So the one I picked... I I'm, I was, I've been on a horror kick recently. I've been watching a lot of Twilight Zone. Nice. Um, I just I love horror so much. I love thrillers. I love, I love horror. horror. Too. Um, so the comic I picked today is called Hell, Nebraska, like hell is in like the underworld, and it's basically about this guy who is a a a teacher, like a school teacher, and he decides that he wants to create hell. Like he realizes he somehow realizes that hell does not actually exist, so he wants to create his own version of hell gnarly so he becomes the devil using this mystical mask and I'll be showing b-roll right now so you can see the mask he has this mystical mask that grants him the ability to like condemn people to hell which he creates and just in like a random place in Nebraska and it's really really freaking cool um, so yeah, basically the first um, I, I just read the first one, and it's him like saying, "So like, why did I start hell? And like, why why did I start it here? How did I do it? All these things, and it's just really freaking cool and dark and twisted and kind of funny too. Dang, um, it's rad. And the imagery, it's just like dark and even like check this out, dude. That's the hell he creates. So is it like it's a real place? It's a real place. Yeah. But is it but it's magical obviously, right? It's mystical. Mystical. I don't know about magical, it's spiritual. How does he create it? Is it uh, like that's can you stumble into hell? Or do you have to like It's like there? there are people like around the country being like like seeing footage of it. Like the news oh, is Oh, so yeah, the yeah. news can like grab is it. like what the heck is going on oh, here? That's tight. Who's this lunatic in the mask that's like doing all this stuff? Yeah. So there's like there's like his side, which is he's like secretly the devil when he puts on this mask, and then there's like the law enforcement that's like trying to figure out what the heck's going on. So there's like there's kind of like an X Filesiness to it, but at the same time it's like a lot of it's through the perspective of the devil too. So it's really cool, really freaking cool. Go check it out. I hope that got your got your interest peaked up. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. Hell, that Nebraska. I'm gonna yeah. download that one too on yeah. my awesome comic and I fix think, app. I think that it's only available digitally too. I That's think that there's really not cool. actually a paper copy of it. So, so you, you have, have to get yeah. that. Bottom uh, line. I think it's said on here. It, it was released on Comics Fix, obviously, but it also came out on uh, Comixology and Iverse Comics. So, yeah. And we're Very all about cool. just all of the digital comics format. So this is the future, people. Future. Yeah. So what did you get? I got Eye of the Gods. It's hmm. so freaking crazy. It's one of the like more uh, crazier stories I've read recently actually it's by um jeremy jeremy 
It might be Jeremy. It's with a G, though. Jeremiah. This guy Bro-A. always always finds it necessary to say the names, <laughs> which I respect. But it's published by Optic House. It's really cool. Oh, so. because it's Eye of the Gods, Optic House. Uh-huh. But um, it's no, it's super crazy. And the coolest thing about the book is that parts of it are blurry because huh. of, of, of his eyes. So it's about this guy who wears glasses, and he's an um, illustrator. He's a comic book artist. Mm. And he he's trying to make the decision. He's, like, really unsure about it if he should get um, this surgery by this company called... This company is called uh, New Eyes with a Z, and they promise you organically made eyes instead hmm. of like just doing like a LASIK surgery type deal. Yeah. So it's like in the future a little bit, like not too distant future, and so they grow you real eyes based off your original ones. They just get out like all the crap. Yeah. Um. So it's like, and you can like customize your eyes. Like if you want different color eyes, you can do whatever you That's want. That's real cool. That's kind of minority so, reporty. <laughs> so. Like, there's a bunch of scenes where, like, he's taking, like, the bandages off and stuff like that. And, it's, like, different scenes are blurry depending on, like, what time of the day it is. So, like, when he yeah. wakes up, like, the first couple oh, pages that's really are, like, kind of blurry. Then it gets clear in the middle of the day. When it's nighttime, like, every, there's, like, a lot more shadows and, like, everything's a little bit blurrier. He's, like, there's, like, a love scene. Uh, and it's, like, like he's a kind love, of, like, love in the making zone. scene? Yeah, so it's, like, Ooh. in the zone. So it's, yeah. like, he's kind of, like, you know, not all there, you know? And, uh, anyways... So his girlfriend convinces him to get the surgery, and he's just, like, not sure about it, but then he, everything's going great. Like, he gets the surgery, he wakes up, he's fine, he can see everything, he just, Stubbed, he's loving life. Yeah. So he goes to bed, and he, like, has this crazy nightmare, and it's, like, the super vivid, realistic nightmare of, like, this murder that's happening in this apartment Hmm. so he wakes up and he's like oh i'm so stoked because like i'm gonna turn this into a book so he starts like writing it then he hears it on the news and then like he sees the people that he saw in his dream and he's like oh my gosh so like he goes to the murder scene and like the news is there reporting on it yeah and he starts to realize that like he's he's seeing crimes happen like when he goes to sleep, this like, is very minority reporting, and uh, it's, which I'm super down for. And uh, without giving too much away, like because that's actually a lot of the story, you gotta like just go go and read it. It's this worth sounds it awesome. It's really really good. It's really really good. So comics fix wow. app. I think I think it also might be only available on the comics fix app as well. So another reason why you should just check out the app because there's awesome stories like this on there. So go there's, check it out. Eye of the Gods. It's, it's first off really hard to write and produce and create a comic book, and then to also get like physical distribution is even harder. Yeah. So this is a really cool way that a lot of artists with really cool stories to tell, um, writers and artists with really cool stories to tell, can get their content out there. Yeah. Without having to like I don't know scramble for money. Oh, the blurriness. That's so cool, dude. Isn't it awesome. Yeah. So we'll show you guys. You'll see. Man, and that's about. like, it's also cool to see a unique use of like the format, you know? Yeah. And like you're seeing through the bandages there and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's really that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, cool. Let's, you want to talk to our guests now? Let's get to our guests. Let's get to Let's our guests. It. Commander Echo's guest of honor. Yep. It's time for the guests. I'm going to get comfy for the guests. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> With Commander Echo's guest of honor. Guests. I'm, guests. That's right. Plural. There's a Z at the end because they're cool guests. They're cool guests. Yeah. The cool guests get the Z. <laughs> Pluralize it with a Z. <laughs> Angelic Magica, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do a round of applause. So, Hi. Cool. Two, Thank two you. Thank person, you. A line of applause. <laughs> yeah. So introduce yourself, guys. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Kenneth Plagar Vidal. I am the uh, writer, director, producer, creator, uh, all of the above yeah. of uh, Angelic Magica. You. You have like a Hollywood, like regal name. Say, say your last name again. Kenneth Pulgar Vidal. Pulgar Vidal. Yep. Mega thumbs up for that. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Orly. And you are. Say it while you're laughing. Oh, we know who she know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm acting. I'm an uh, actress in it. Um, mm-hmm. yes. No, come on, be honest. You've also been helping out immensely with pre-production. So pre-production. She's uh, yeah. Actress yeah. producer basically. Nice. So. <laughs> pre-production. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. Like, so, for those of you who uh, don't know, um, and I was really stoked, a lot of our fans uh, 
I went and checked out your guys' stuff um, mm. because a lot of people were commenting on the videos and stuff that thank you guys you. have uh, mm. floating around. So thank you, thank cool. you. We got some oh. comments. Appreciate it. But, uh, nice. um, so for people who don't know, so tell us in like a nutshell what Angelic Magica is. Uh, so in a nutshell, Angelic Magica is just kind of my attempt to bring anime into the live action medium, uh, but kind of do it properly. I mean, nobody needs another uh, Dragon Ball Evolution type of type of fiasco. Why and um, I mean, for comedic reasons, it's nice to have that kind of stuff. <laughs> Was it bad? <laughs> no, it's it's um, yeah. it's if, if, you, if you ask most so. people at a at a convention, it's like most people refuse to admit it even exists. Wow, actually, I, I like 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 that level. Bad. So is it like Last Airbender bad? I would mm, I think say a little. It's it's is. funnier, but in terms of quality, it probably probably a little worse. But I mean, the thing yeah. is, is that yeah. like up up until this point, no no one is really um, in, in America at least. No one's really pulled off a successful live action adaptation of anime. Mm-hmm. I mean, over in Japan, they have like I uh, they they did a, an adaptation of uh, Rurouni Kenshin. Mm-hmm. They uh, you know to turn uh, most of the story into about three movies, and I thought you know it's, it's it's an adaptation, so it's a little different, you know. And I thought it was great, um, but uh, Hollywood being the way it is, it's like you kind of need a success here for that to become more of a trend and yeah. I very much see um, anime being the next the next trend really just as there's comic yeah. book movies now um, I can see anime being the next thing I could that's I was just thinking about that actually like yeah. I feel like when like, what 15 years from now mm-hmm. when comic book movies maybe start to take that dip because yeah, I feel like they're going to be going Vogue strong anymore, for a little yeah. while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. it's a what's, what's sure. going to be next? I totally think it's going to be anime. Because mm-hmm. anime is awesome. getting really popular Yay. here. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Go anime. That's the dream, man. Eh? So. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for that. That's going to be really, really cool. So, Sweet, thank are you, you guys thank you. stoked for Attack on Titan live action adaptation? It's um, I really want to see it actually. It's yeah. um, I mean, I've I've heard definitely mixed reviews, but the biggest thing that I've heard about it is that you can't go into it expecting it's going to be exactly like the anime or the manga. Yeah. Like it's right. anime and manga is definitely more action and just like over the top balls to the walls type of type of deal, mm-hmm. and the movie is very much more. I've heard it's much more like psychological horror. So like it's just like a completely different genre. Yeah. yeah. So it's like uh, it was what I've heard at least is like as long as you have the right expectations going into it, it'll be great. But I mean, you know, otherwise you'll be disappointed. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have. We will. Yeah, I'm gonna give examples of. I, I I like them, but I definitely wouldn't necessarily call them successful adaptations. But yeah. uh, Sucker Punch mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. was a pretty big. Uh, I mean, most people would call it a failure. I, I still enjoyed it, so I, I love Zack no, no, Snyder. Uh, I thought it was fun. I thought I thought it was yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I got it. it. I just mm-hmm. don't think, I don't think it was marketed the right way, and I don't. I think they should have just marketed it to like a very specific audience instead and of trying to make it. That's like, not Hollywood, though. Yeah. yeah. I know, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Sucker Punch is like the the magical girls genre, right? S- sort yeah, of they, yeah, yeah, yeah right? definitely. Yeah, like we're, we're never into yeah. those dreams or like those those uh, those fantasy worlds. It's very magical girl like. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and yeah. the whole steampunk thing, and yeah, it was really it was really really cool. And I guess like, I guess that Pacific Rim, which I loved, mm-hmm. um, which was I'm definitely uh, I wouldn't say a rip off. I'm not sure if he acknowledged it or not, but um, of uh, Evangelion. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, very heavily yeah. inspired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he acknowledged it. Did he acknowledge it? That? I, I think like he did. did. Dude, those interview. are the same exact monsters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then and then like the the suits that they're wearing look like really really similar to like the plug suits that they have in oh, Eva. Yeah. Yeah. And then I mean even they they even gave like a uh, Mako Mori like the blue hair just like yeah. just like Ray. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I and again I wouldn't say, I mean I, I even though I enjoyed those movies they weren't successful anime adaptations like it didn't have the same feeling like I like the dialogue yeah. you know what I mean and mm-hmm. so they just feel would, like Hollywood blockbusters yeah I would yeah. love mm-hmm. to see what you're talking about like I would love <laughs> to see I'm like I, I don't know like the characters responding to certain events in such ways like in anime it's like mm-hmm. over the top it's dramatic it's mm-hmm kind of weird it takes you a while it might take you a couple times to like figure it out like I love that though you know mm-hmm. so it's yeah. acquired taste for sure but once you get it it's like craft beer in San Diego <laughs> <laughs> once you get that taste it's like you want it all the time that's, yeah. that's mm-hmm. a really good, that's a really good <laughs> this is pretty good yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I think one of the big things with that is that um, it's like uh, Hollywood gets action. You know, like you can definitely yeah. see that. Like, you know, we make some pretty great action movies here here in uh, in LA. And um, but the thing is, is that I guess kind of uh, what what for for me at least, what I've always feels felt is kind of missing a little bit is also balancing out with the story. It's like you know, I love Pacific Rim, but the story, you know, it never got to that same like yeah. over the top insanity that that Eva does. Yeah. 
You know, it's like like ever, ever like that that, that actually um, that show is actually the reason why I passed Psych 101 because like every single character in that show had a major psychological dra- issue, yeah. and we covered all those in class. I was like, oh wait, I already know those. Yeah, it's so cool. and uh, and yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like once once you can balance balance both out, you know, like the the crazy action that Hollywood's known for and like the amazing stories from anime, then you, then you're gonna you be a good spot. Do you think it's because they're scared that they leave stuff like that out? Be it they're like, oh, this is too deep. People are gonna just walk out of the movie theater. They're not gonna get it. Be- it's you think, um. You think it has something to do with it? I mean. You know, it's uh that that could be part of it, but then at the same time, you know, why did something like Inception get made? Well, Inception's That's like true. boiled down into a digestible flavor. And mm-hmm. here's, and here's the thing though too, it's yeah. Christopher Nolan. So yeah. like it's like he's mm-hmm. been marketed this way, so where like when people go to see a Chris Nolan movie, they know I feel like, oh, we gotta like strap ourselves in, drink lots of right. water and like make sure mm-hmm. we're, like yeah, we're <laughs> hydrate. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I feel like, we're in it for the long ride, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, not, they're not going to see Fast and the Furious, so you know. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. But uh, <laughs> they're just they're going to see a Chris Nolan movie, and I, I feel like yeah. it's mm-hmm. all about marketing. Yeah. You know, because I feel like if That's you're true. going to see Fast and the Furious, and Chris Nolan was directing, and there's all these twists and turns, people just get annoyed. Even if it was a great movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like there's that that really weird. I think Hollywood's really scared of making intelligent movies. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> If you want to put a label on it, you know? yeah, it's um, it's interesting. I mean, like, you do, you do get, you get, you do get some, some back and forth stuff. I think, I think, like, what uh, one of those big distinctions also is like what their their goal for the movie is, because you know the same Hollywood studios that, that end up making you know these big, over the top stuff like you know like Transformers, like like Pacific Rim or anything like that. You know, at the same time, uh, other like sub branches of those same big uh, studios end up also funding you know the movies that do end up winning the Oscars. You know, and those are like super heady super super like you know either emotional family dramas or crazy psychological stuff yeah, emotionally driven stories so yeah. it's so i wouldn't say that like hollywood flat out says no to anything that's intelligent but they, they definitely keep it in mind who they're marketing it to i mean because it's you don't you don't make a movie for the oscars expecting that it's going to be a huge box office hit at the same time if it is i mean awesome yeah sometimes but it's, cool. it's um like I mean, lord of the rings um, life of pi i think did really well in the box office yeah yeah, yeah that, that always. But in spite of that, they still uh, the the you heard like the oh, the, the effects studio, company yeah. Yeah, the, the effects so company sad. went went bankrupt. Really? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the, that movie. yeah, the people who did the VFX for Life of Pi went bankrupt regardless oh my off of Life of Pi. They won the Oscar and everything. It was actually a huge controversy because like they, they were up there, they're accepting the Oscar, they're trying to tell their story, and they got played off before they could even oh finish it. Gosh, yeah. Well, I didn't like, know this that. is too sad. Get them off. Get them off. Yeah. Yeah, that basically, is, uh, the amount of money it, it costs to make those kind of effects uh, right. is, like, not, like, in the budget for Hollywood movies, you know? Wow. So, like, they were making effects, like, on the fly that were costing them way more than, than they were getting paid for so it. So, all those mm-hmm. animals were fake? Yeah. 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 I yeah, mean, actually. I figured maybe something yeah. had to be real at some yeah, you point. You can't make a tiger do that on cue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now attack a boy, but don't kill him. <laughs> and now be chill. Just Go back under that thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, dang, dude, that yeah. sucks. No, it's really sad. Yeah, but it kind really of was sucks. like a wake-up call for, for Hollywood on VFX companies and stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you need to pay these guys more. Yeah, like, what a right. mm-hmm. message to send. Like, how are we going to go into yeah. the future? And, like, with technology and evolve with, like, all these companies, if, like... The message we're sending out is oh, we don't value thanks. enough to pay your bills yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> with your highly specialized talents. Yeah, it right. took you years and years and decades to perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah. maybe you can shed some light on this for me. I've always been really curious about this: how movies like Lord of the Rings or um, like uh, Ted, like didn't Ted, Ted win an Oscar for like visual effects? Mm, I don't think Ted wants something. I mean, I uh, I'm not too sure on on Ted specifically. I know, I know that Lord of the Rings, it um, if I'm mistaken, actually never won the Oscar for for visual effects. It won for best picture. Oh, okay. I believe, yeah. Yeah. What? So the like, third one. I guess. Yeah, third one. Yeah. Huh. Like, yeah. Return of the King. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That bridge is like when it's an action movie. Do they just like not talk about it? Like. It's um. Oscar, I mean, during like the Oscars performance or mm-hmm. something, or is it kind of like music awards where there's like a whole another section of awards that go on before you actually see it on TV or something? Mm-hmm. There's that like, too. 
Yeah, there's definitely that. Because that always confuses me. I'll be like, wait, I didn't see. Like, oh, you know, I yeah, know you're people, like reading I about it. You're like, wait, that mm-hmm. didn't win an Oscar. I watched the entire yeah, I watched thing. The Oscars, you know. Like, I mean, yeah. I know, I know that there's smaller Oscars that I don't think they they, they have time to fit everything into like the full the full mm-hmm. show. But um, but yeah, for for the most part, I mean, they put they put the big ones. You know, best special effects, best costume, yeah. music, picture, director, all that stuff. Um, in terms of action movies, you know, like they just. Um, it's just not what the, the the people at the Oscars are, are looking for more often than not. Yeah. I mean, because then you've got some stuff that like you wonder like how that didn't win, uh, how that didn't win best special effects like like uh, the, the last Harry Potter movie. You know, it's like mm-hmm. that was just complete was over the top. Um, I think it was nominated, but it didn't win. Huh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of stuff like that because it's just. Uh, it, I guess that more comes down to whoever's currently uh, voting in the Oscars itself. Yeah. It's uh, the whole Oscars thing is a little bit more hush hush, you know. Not not a lot of info gets out about it, for yeah, the most part. So interesting. It's pretty yeah. inside too. It's so crazy. It's not like <laughs> democratic. It's like oligarchic. <laughs> sort of bureaucratic. It's confidential. Yeah, exactly. Super All confidential. We'll, we'll have to kill you if you find out. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you want to know? Tell us. If you had to pitch Angelic Magica to a Hollywood studio like Mm -hmm. your dream studio yeah from all the research you've you've Mm -hmm. done like what what would be like the dream studio like Warner Brothers Disney like who would who would pick up your movie? Uh, in terms of like like the, the the giant ones, probably Warner Brothers. Um, from what I've seen, it seems like they, they take they, they tend to take bigger risks. Like I mean, they they're the ones that did Mad Max, for instance. Yeah, yeah. You know, and Mad Max is like Good that call, was yeah. dude. I love that movie yeah. so much. Yeah. 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 And uh, really? oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So dude. <laughs> You, sh- you you should. I know. Oh, I get a video about Mad Max, and you still haven't seen. I know. I get, <laughs> I get shamed every time, as you deserve to be. Yeah. Sorry, there's a guys. there's a One Piece uh, Mad Max, right? A yeah, version yeah. of it on. It's a One Piece Twitter. Mad Max uh, uh, mashup. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, it's it, it works cool. way better yeah. than you think it would too. It's wow, it's really so. Cool. Cool. <laughs> With, like, I had to retweet. The cartoon? Yeah. yeah, you have to. You gotta show that to me. Yeah, it, it, was, it was just it was just, mm-hmm. it was just a drawing, and so it's like they, they drew all of the the characters from Mad Max Fury Road as One Piece characters, nice. basically, oh, it's in that style. That's so rad. it's pretty awesome. That's super, super rad. <laughs> yeah. So Warner Brothers. Yeah, so probably Warner Brothers. I mean, it seems like they they uh, they seem to be one of the studios that takes the biggest risks. Um, outside of that, probably Lionsgate. Cool. Uh, Lionsgate. I mean, they, they've made a lot of uh, pretty crazy films like that before. I mean, they. I mean, they're, they're the ones behind um, a lot of the horror movies, and um, I mean, the ones that you know, they 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 were. Uh, I feel like they're behind Saw and stuff like that. Yeah. And, they, um, they, they definitely you know. are. they so, are they still independent? Do you know or? That I don't remember off the top of my head. Do you do you know, Rena? Because I didn't realize how far back Lionsgate actually goes. I was watching, it wasn't Terminator, it was like, I was watching some movie from the 80s or something, and it had the LGF, and then it had like the, the lion like, right. in the sky. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, they've been around forever. I didn't realize that. <laughs> wow. I was wondering if they were yeah. like, still independent or if they were had been bought out by now. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure on that personally. Um, but yeah. So what are you guys working on right now? What's, what's on the burner? So, um, well, right now, honestly, we've just kind of been focusing on all of the um, on all of the social marketing and trying to get the you're trying to get the word out for for Angelic Magica. Yeah. Here and uh, well, thank you, thank yeah. you. Trying to, yeah, trying it's to at really least. Really easy to find. <laughs> Angelic Magica. Oh, okay. Here we go. Sweet. Sweet. Here it all is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, because we've uh, we've been working at this uh, at this project, you know, including including all all of the stuff before we started filming from um, from around March uh, until now. Not Nonstop, yeah. about 14 hours a day, Dang. no weekends. <laughs> so <laughs> it's um it's it's taking it taking a bit of a toll on us, but honestly, I think it's kind of worth it. Seeing seeing people's the, the reactions that we got at Anime Expo and and recently uh, we we went to uh, Moshi Moshi Nippon, which that. was uh, it was another it's a Japanese pop culture festival. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so just just the sort of reactions we got were, were definitely worth worth all the all the hours we threw in there. That's that's for sure. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I mean, right now we're just trying to trying to make the uh, the Indiegogo as much of a success as we can, really. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's your plan with with the funds from that? Well, the funds for that, we're, we're basically um, we're gonna see what we see what we see what we raise, and then from there we're just gonna go ahead and um, turn it into a short film first. And uh, what's what's typically done in for for actually for even the big movies and whatnot is like even even the big studios like Paramount, Warner Brothers, all that stuff. They actually themselves go to go to studio uh, go to uh, sorry uh, investors actually to go look for money. They themselves don't usually fund it themselves. And so our plan is basically to do the same, only where we're cutting out the middleman really. Yeah. And so we 
we can have enough money. We can, we can have enough money to actually, you know, make a uh, a legitimate, you know, full blown Hollywood level quality uh, angelic magic of feature. That'd be freaking awesome. So yeah. what if, would you have to refilm? Um, so yeah, yeah. So so basically, the, the the short film. I mean, that's something that we'd be giving away to to the uh, to anyone who contributes on on the Indiegogo as okay. well. So you can get, kind of get an idea of what we were what we were going for. But then from there, you know, we, we'd we'd refilm with like uh, you know with a full crew with with full uh, equipment and you know with with all the backing. So basically, like an have. upgraded version of the teaser that we have now. Yeah, I love, exactly. <laughs> I love that yeah, teaser. we're we're, do, we're doing Appreciate levels. It. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the short film's upgrade an upgraded version of the teaser, and then the feature would be an upgraded version of the short. Very cool. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Have you. No studio telling you what to do. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Man. <laughs> but, I mean, Indiegogo is great because it's like a crowdfunding is a great way for people to, you know, we could implement people's like sh fans mm -hmm. ideas and, exactly. and mm -hmm. we have like creative, I guess, freedom to do so. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. It's like it's because in, in, in the studio system, you know, if, if you were to say, oh, yeah, you know, if, if, if we have if we have like a disagreement on something and something say, say, you know, like the DP and, and the director, you know, the director of photography and the director, uh, you know, they don't they don't agree on how how you should show something or how something should be portrayed or you know how much time you should spend on a certain subject we can actually take that you know just go online so that to the fans to the people who have who have donated who are interested in angelic magic and say hey guys you know what do you think yeah and just get everyone's input on it and so in that in that case i mean it's really just everyone's movie it's not it's not just paramount it's not just warner brothers it's it's literally everyone's film right that's pretty kick-ass or if you guys want yeah I mean, if you got <laughs> if you guys want like you know more visual effects then we can try to implement that mm -hmm. too yeah. Exactly. So, you, guys, you guys want to see even more action. You want to see more and more faceless yeah. businessmen getting their necks snapped. All right. You know, we'll we'll find a way. We'll shove some in. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> By the fans, for the fans. So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then when it comes out, you're like, dude, I had a part in making this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. See yeah. that little teacup right there? That was my suggestion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then the big thing is, is that you know, it's like, is whoever, whoever does uh, contribute is like, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna put your name up in the credits. Yeah. You know, it's like no matter how much you contribute, even if it's just even if it's just a dollar. Your name will sh will show up in the credits, and you know you can show off to all your friends. Be like, yeah, you know, I I did that. You know, like my, my name's up there. I helped them right when they're getting started off. That's tight. So that's super cool. And what? you could nice. be on like the ground level of, of like the next wave of media too. Like exactly. Live action anime stuff, <laughs> yeah. which would be rad. So. I, I feel I feel like you're on it, dude. I mean, that's that yeah. has to be the next thing. I think about that all the time. Like, I think we've talked about this on the show before, but how comic book movies right now are almost like how cowboy movies were. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. like absolutely. The, uh, 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. like uh, and even like when detective you go to, movies were that for a while too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And going further back, musicals too. Yeah, music. I mean, it it happens. It happens all the time. It's it's always in cycles. I mean, that's just kind of like uh, one of those things about humanity in general. It's like we kind of operate in cycles, yep. and so naturally, everything's got its rise. Everything's got its fall. I mean, eventually, I don't know when. It's it's really impossible to say when. But you know, comic book movies are going to die down. They're not going to disappear, but they'll yeah, die down yeah, a little bit yeah. more. The, the and then craze, it won't be so much of a craze. Exactly. Exactly. I feel yeah. like it already is dying down. I don't at all. I just feel like people are like, okay, like the the fervor for it isn't as strong as it used to be. You know what I mean? Like before, it was like it was all the buzz. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like it was exciting before. Well, no, I know you're super into it, and I love comic movies too. But I like it more from that for because DC's about to launch their universe. That's true, mm -hmm. but now it's not That'll like the exciting new thing anymore, where everybody was like, "Oh yeah. my god, all these comic book movies." Are okay, being made. I, told, I agree with that. It's, it's not like, like the talk of the town anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, we got Superman well, vs. Batman coming and, out, and Suicide mm -hmm. Squad, and like, it's well, not like, oh my god, it's too. happening. Like when Spider-Man came out, I mean, I was twelve, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, yeah, oh, something yeah, like it that. Was just like, yeah, like, oh my god, seriously? <laughs> yeah. They let someone the cartoon I watched <laughs> every morning when I was a kid before Dude. school. And then you remember when X Men came out, man? It's just like, oh my god, X Men! It's like, dude, I, wa I watch, yeah, right dude, I watch the cartoon all the time, you know. <laughs> it's, but the thing is, I, I, I kind of get what you mean that, like, you, you don't, you don't see as much as, as a, of, of excitement. Like, you, know, you remember the excitement that, that was like, you could feel it in the air right before, like, the, the first Avengers was gonna come out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, everyone is talking about it, even yeah, if yeah. you weren't a fan of comic books whatsoever. Like, people were like, all right, you know, I'll check it out. Week, dude, I know, yeah, man. yeah. Like, it was like on the exactly. Daily Show and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. just, it was pop culture was just in it, you know. Yeah. And now it's like, yeah, we're gonna have some more Avengers movies. Like people will go see them. They'll make a lot of money. 
I think Infinity War is going to be the next big one. I don't yeah. think. I think mm-hmm. they picked. I loved Age of Ultron, but I feel like they picked like not the best guy for, uh, for like the best villain for a uh, Avengers movie. Uh, I think Ultron's Infinity pretty War. whatever. Pretty whatevers. Infinity War should. <laughs> yes, this should be pretty cool. Yeah. That's gonna have everybody in it. Like that's yeah. gonna be absolutely. Maybe it'll be too much though, man. Mm-hmm. That's that's that's, that's what they've been talking like, about nowadays. Is, just, yeah. Like, a couple. They're like, yeah, some other Avengers slapped on at the end too. And I was like, I want to know more about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the big things they've been talking about is just is precisely that that like uh, they, some people already feel like uh, Ultron had too many too many Avengers to actually give them stories and whatnot yeah. to actually like talk about them. That's true. And. I I mean, th- think about who else. Who else are going to have for Infinity War? I mean, they're, they're ta- I think they were talking about bringing you know Guardians of the Galaxy in for that one too, and then also you're going to have um, you're going to have Doctor Strange. You're going to have yeah. uh, well, Captain Marvel, Ant Man, Black Panther, and mm-hmm. well, that's in addition to like the the twelve that already popped up in the in, in yeah. Avenger in Age of Ultron and uh, Infinity War or uh, yeah. Captain America Civil War. Yes, uh, yep. that's going to have. I'm still psyched for that. Like, eight <laughs> yeah, people, be cool. like eight characters in it. Mm-hmm. Like really huge, huge characters that you know. I just, I always get really bummed out when they just kind of shove them off to the side. Like Crossbones is going to be in it apparently. Mm-hmm. We well, only get two hours of film to put him in, you know. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, as much as I love Christopher Nolan, his Batman movies. I mean, I was like, dude, ease up on the bad guys, bro. <laughs> like they their own movie. Like you know, yeah. Scarecrow just got. I mean, that sucks. I was like, yeah. such a great villain, and he was just like this yeah, creepy doctor that had a mask. <laughs> Yeah. He, he was never the main villain of er- any one of the movies either. Like, he was always like the side guy. <laughs> he gets dealt with real easily too. Like, Alright, Scarecrow's done now. Next. Yeah. Dude, especially especially how they portray him in the games in the the Arkham games. Yeah. Like that's he's pretty great. cool. Yeah. yeah. He's great, man. Um, even as stoked as I am, I mean, I got like my Superman and like, dude, I'm ready. Ooh. I'm ready for Batman versus Superman, but. Every time I hear, like, oh, Aquaman's going to be in it now. Oh, like, Wonder Woman's going to be in it now. Oh, like, Lex Luthor's going to be in it now. It's like, and I'm like, all right, guys, like, come on, don't blow it. You know, just yeah. don't mm-hmm. Like, Green Lantern's going to be, or uh, not Green Lantern, Flash and Cyborg are going to be in it now. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, really? Dude. Like, I don't even care. Going? I just want Batman uh, and Superman in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it is Donna just Justice. Deep into that, yeah. It's Donna Justice, yeah. so like, yeah. they have to... Has to, to set all that up, mm-hmm. the genesis. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. What, what's going to happen when all your characters get their own like side films? Uh, yeah. side Are you going to make a team up movie? Discussing this. <laughs> <laughs> too many characters. Uh, Are you going to make a team up movie? Did the angelic magica cinematic story is just <laughs> too too much, yeah, man? Angelic, <laughs> lost with all the characters. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's um in all honesty, like uh the, the plan for Angelic Magica is really just kind of one film uh, for now. It's there 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 is room for for one more at most, uh, but right now it's like I I wrote the I spent two and a half years writing writing the the full feature length script, and so I mean that's the thing is because like I did want to bring in all those elements of anime that we love, like all those uh, all of that the multi layered story, all the depth, you know, all the fact that like everything is designed for a reason in anime. It's it's everything's always got some sort of like plot elements tied to. It and uh, so that's the reason why, why it took so long, for instance. You know, also building, making sure there are three dimensional characters, building the backstories, and um, and that's something that like the the film kind of revolves around, for instance. You know, it's like that we we do get to see. Uh, we do get to find out uh, the, each one of the girls' backstories. You know, every every character that we that we meet in the story, we find out their backstory. We get to see how they got to where they are, or why they were given the chance to become a magical girl, and you know, like why they're even here trying to trying to save this guy's life. Right, because it was originally a feature. Yeah, yeah. And uh, ori- original plan, yeah, yeah. initial plan <laughs> with our team was to uh, submit to f- film festivals, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. And yeah. then we're like, well, we should make it more juicy and condensed, so we'll, let's do short juicy. film. Mm-hmm. And then, well, yeah. because we're sh- you know the time span <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can be short, let's do teaser to see where it's going to go. Yeah. So we've got, uh, exactly. and that's where we are right now. Yeah. The trailer is so clear, like what's going on. <laughs> I love mm-hmm. the trailer. I mean, <laughs> thank I, you so much. I, actually, maybe it's not. I I uh, could be wrong, but what I get is. The main character, he's mm-hmm. stuck in his own mind or something, and you're you're going to save him, and he like he feels you're a threat at first, right? And then you're you're there to protect him. Is that 
It's uh, a. <laughs> right, so so without spo- without spoiling anything, it's uh, I, I need to keep in mind what I what I can can and can reveal. Yeah. It's um it's hey, it, it, it true. Just, like, that's, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, it, it, it does take place in the real world. It's more just kind of like like these these nightmares and like these these various psychological elements are are kind of working their way and becoming physical. You know, they're mm-hmm. they're they're becoming corporal, and things that shouldn't exist, things that should only exist inside of you know these crazy Freudian nightmares are coming to life. Yeah. And uh, but the thing is, is that it's not his nightmare that we're seeing. It's actually someone else's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah. And so these these That's girls, you know, yeah. Cool. Thank you, thank you. And and so these girls, you know, they, they specialize in this sort of thing. They specialize in basically finding whenever these sorts of events happen, uh, preventing it from from actually killing any people in, in the real world, and kind of you know uh, cutting cutting the source off. Uh, right. Again, yeah, but without without spoiling anything, so because yeah. it is about sacrifices, it is about forgiveness and acceptance. Mm-hmm. So. You, yeah, very much so. You're you're a badass, by the way. Oh, in the, uh, <laughs> in the trailer. So very did, you, did you have any like martial arts experience? Um, because it looks like you did. I, <laughs> cinematically, no. <laughs> it's it's. Some major ass, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, it's funny because uh, we've uh, we've um, actually uh, uh, we've teamed up um, with our friends and it's actually from our samurai sword fighting class mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we do samurai sword fighting both staff and a little bit of hand-to-hand combat nice. and uh, yeah and mm-hmm. that's where it started because he's a writer and we have the fight choreographer uh, during you know in, in class as well mm-hmm. I was like well why don't we just do this together and we started gathering mm-hmm. people friends yeah so cool. and then uh, that was also how we got the uh, the, the lead actor uh, Toru Masamune yes who um, who uh, yeah should probably mention he, he was um his, his big thing was that he he played Shredder in the 2014 Ninja Turtles movie mm, and awesome. so he actually is another student in the class too and so just he's also there uh, along with us and we we figured you know well we got him here you know like let's just see if he's interested and yeah. sure enough yeah once once we kind of pitched it to him he just loved how how crazy the the, the idea was he said he was down for it so it's super nice for him too, I mean, yeah like, yeah just like that that look man like, dude yeah like I said, i've only seen the trailer obviously that's all you guys that's all i could i could find and uh yeah. i'm like dude there's, there's so much there you know it's really awesome Definitely. can we play the trailer on the show yeah of course can we, like, toss to it right now <laughs> go for it like, go about. appreciate it dan thank you here's the trailer <laughs> officer you need to pull yourself together right now Where is my son? He's dead. My friends and I are here to protect you. What? The thing that got your son. We're out of time. Hand it behind your head! Come back in. How freaking cool was that? <laughs> yeah, how write in the that? comment section below how freaking cool that was. <laughs> we already know how cool it is, so you don't have to tell know, them. But yeah, dude, I, I I would love to know. I, I really would. I mean, I, I always love hearing what people have to say. I mean, even even if they have negative things to say, I mean, I love to I love to know what I could do better for the next time. Honestly. Yeah. Right. Getting back to your characters, by the way, like uh, you guys were giving out trading cards at Anime Expo. Where we yes, met. that's cool. Um, mm-hmm. And I love that. that. I love. Cards. I love the uh, just the attention to detail and how like each individual character like you, I care about those characters mm-hmm. already. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, thank you, like, thank I you. Don't even, I don't even know them, and it's it's just like 
It's like, dude, what's this little girl's background like? Why does this lady is like tall and has all these weapons? Like, you know, you just you just care. Like, where do they come from? You know, what's their angle? What's their motive? And uh, mm-hmm. he's really smart on marketing wise. No, very cool. Thank you, thank you, man. I definitely appreciate it. It was just, um, I mean, it just kind of the the idea just kind of came randomly one day, right? We were just kind of like pitching around, you know, how we how we can make ourselves stand out. I figured, you know, like, well, we're gonna be at an anime convention and people have trading cards, so why not, really? And we just turned them into into just character cards, you know, so you could, you can read a little bit about them or about the character, have a small quote from them, and then also obviously our info if you want to find out more and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, because it's um, it's because we we definitely did want to show like the the depth in the characters because I did spend so freaking long, you know, trying trying to create them and whatnot. And uh, exactly, yeah. Could it's, we reveal? A, a little bit about the character, or no? We can we can talk a bit. Yeah, we can we can have some some uh, DLOD exclusives. Right here the <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So so so, so the basic idea, you know, in, in in creating the characters is that you know, uh, for for the most part, we, we do see them in their magical girl outfit, for instance, with their weapons and whatnot. And so one one of the concepts that we had in mind was that um, this actually kind of comes a little bit from um, from Silent Hill too, actually, a little bit that, that you know everything everything you see is is, is very inspired by uh, by their past, you know, by by what's going on mm-hmm. and so for instance you know that every every one of the girls outfits is is reflective of their ideal actually you know so the sort of ideal that they held before they made before they they made this contract and became a magical girl mm-hmm. and so for each one of the girls you know that that in turn reveals a little bit a little bit about themselves and what they they made the contract for yeah and then also their weapon is a direct reflection of of said contract you know so um let me think of a good one to to reveal. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I could probably do Ellie. I mean, that's, that's not a huge. Yeah, that's, that's not that's not too big. A, not too big of a. Let's of a, do Ellie. A blow. Okay, so 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 Ellie. Ellie. She she's um she she's the blonde. She's the blonde Southern Rose of, of the group. Basically, she's very much of like like the the kind older sister. Very much a jokester. Plays around a lot and just uh, she's very lighthearted. Keeps everyone kind of uh, upbeat. And so, the thing is, is that. Uh, she, she, you know, but before before she actually became a magical girl and whatnot, it's kind of revealed that she was, um, she actually grew up in a trailer home and whatnot. You know, she she grew up in a pretty pretty very very poor location, a very very poor lifestyle, and because of that, she actually turned to drugs pretty soon, pretty early on in her life. She she was actually addicted to heroin for quite some time and so you know eventually she she got pregnant she was pregnant at a a young age and uh, her body was so weak to the point that she actually couldn't give birth without her dying and so the doctors basically gave her like an ultimatum it's like you know save one or the other save your child or yourself oh dang and so she she just uh, she, obviously she chose to save her her daughter her child, and ultimately what ends up happening is that as she she's just you know on the operating table there dying she just kind of makes a wish out to whoever could hear it you know wishing that she could be there for for her daughter that she could still live, mm-hmm. and lo and behold she survives miraculously, and you know when when she kind of wakes up and becomes aware of what's going on she she's now become this this magical girl, and she needs she needs to fight these these creatures that's kind of her her, her duty now. And then the weapon. And so, and so yeah so so, so, so then so then in, ter- in terms of, yeah. <laughs> So, so the weapon is is a direct reflection of her, um, of of what she what she wished for really. You know, she wished that she she didn't she wasn't affected by by these drugs and whatnot. And so, her weapon in the movie looks like a, a large glass spear with a metal tip. In reality, it's kind of like a representation of a hypodermic needle. Yeah. Yeah, wow. and then in turn, also her outfit is, is is her ideal because one of the things that she always loved to do is to watch Saturday morning kung fu movies. Mm-hmm. And so to her, that was that was her escape very much. That was how she would get out of this this really sh- life that she lived, and you know the, the horrible things that she she deal with, you know, on a day to day basis. That was her escape, yeah. and so now she can kind of embody that herself. That is so can we, And so can, we, <laughs> can, can we reveal the relationship between Mika and Ellie? Um. Yeah, yeah, I suppose we can. I suppose we can. Actually, that's uh, okay. Yeah. One more, one, one, one more good one, one more good one. And so, so the thing is, is that you know, so so, uh, so, so, so we've got the four girls. We've got Angel, who who Rena plays, and then you've got Henrietta, who's who's she? She's the African American girl in in a flapper dress with a uh, with a Tommy gun. I'm pretty badass, and then you know Ellie, as, as we just described, and Mika, who's she, she's the youngest of the group. She's actually about 12 years old, more or less. A very, very cute blonde girl, uh, played by uh, Oshian Bukel, and uh, you know she's got her hair pulled back into a ponytail, is very wearing a very, very cute dress. Almost looks like a like a flower girl type of type of dress. Even got petals in it too, mm-hmm. and she fights with a bow and arrow. The thing is, is that uh, Mika is actually Ellie's daughter. That's mm. right. Yeah. That's very cool. And so whether they and so that's that becomes you know a little they bit more of the uh, 
Well, that's that's something you're gonna have to find out in the film. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah but uh, spoil everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, we bits probably, and pieces. We should probably get to Twitter questions now before we get too hung up. Yeah. On this. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep at. I, I'm gonna. Tr- I'm gonna get to the grid. So. For sure. Okay. That's so cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That honestly is like. For me, the sign of what makes an anime good or bad is do I care about the characters? There's a oh, lot yeah. of animes out there that have a really cool concept, like just really amazing, interesting things, mm-hmm. right, and then I, right. I, the characters don't interest me at all. I'm like, yeah. oh, these are just archetypal, like, just kind of throwaway characters. Like, oh, this girl has angel wings. I've never seen that before in anime. Like, <laughs> stuff that I'm like, come on, do something new and original instead yeah. of, like, these things, and put some thought into it like you clearly have. Thank and, you, like, thank you. Like, I don't know, carve really cool backstories like <laughs> these characters have. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, no, no, I, stoked. no I definitely appreciate it. I yeah. definitely, definitely appreciate it. I mean, that, that was one of the things that it was one of the the big things as to why I wanted to to have it actually set, take place in in America versus Japan because you know it's magical girls is a very Japanese thing you know it's a very anime thing yeah. and so just bringing that same concept over to America I mean that just in and of itself changes in so many different ways just because of the the location the culture the people that live here mm-hmm. and so um, and yeah it just it just kind of grew organically really. <laughs> And honestly, it's something that not many Americans have been exposed to, I feel like. There's not That's a lot true. of Magical Girl, like, properties that exist. Like, like I can't think of a single, like, really popular movie that has that as, as like, the setup or, like, the, the theme, you know? Mm-hmm. Kind of like so. a genre bender, I guess, in a sense. Could yeah. I say yeah. that? Yeah, yeah it really is. So it would be something new for Americans to be like, oh, this is, we've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, let's exactly. All go see it. Yeah. Let's all go invest on Indiegogo for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, first question is from at Curseborn Saga. We know yeah. those dudes. <laughs> um, what aspects of anime have inspired this live action film, and how do you plan to translate them from animation techniques into live action techniques? Good question. Okay, cool, cool. Um, that was actually one of the big things that we, we always tried to keep in mind is, you know, like because because anime is anime, it's animation, you know. Um, certain things don't translate over too well. Yeah. You know, so so for instance, when you, when you do have those kind of cutaways or like some someone's face is like super, super dis- distorted where, you know, like their eyes are huge because they're surprised or mm-hmm. and you've got like the sweat drop falling <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, or you've got like the giant X yeah. over their eyes and they're passed yeah. out. It's like yeah. certain things like you, you can't, you can't really translate it without it looking kind of cheesy. I mean, you yeah. could do, you could do a really stylized movie but yeah. you need to ease people into that first absolutely I mean mm-hmm. it's you know even like um Honestly, I, I can't. I can't think of a of, of a single off, off the top of my head. At least, I can't think of a single like example as to something that that's that stylized and it's still mm. kind of a big success, really. I don't think so, it exists. Yeah. So that's the thing is that you definitely need to ease people into it a bit more. I felt like it's um, really cool to have like one of the single sweat drops. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I'd be de- like. You could even do it as like a nod. To it, yeah, you know? but that, but you're making a good point. Like, wait, made out of paper? Thing when you're confused, like, <laughs> thing above your head. Yeah. Uh, no, that's like, cute. Maybe, like, it could be like a <laughs> Matrix or something. Mm-hmm. Like, Neo like dodges a bullet and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, would people be? Okay that, you know, these are good. Mm-hmm. Question to ask, you know, when you're making a film, like you might want to do that, it might be mm-hmm. cool artistically, but some people might yeah. be like, uh, because they won't, they won't get where it's from. Mm-hmm. Like, that was yeah. cheesy. Why'd they do that? You know, exactly. Right, that right. What was that? Yeah. Be yeah. Right. Them, that's right. the thing, though. It's like I feel like, um, you know, whether that might work in live action or not, that's really up for debate still. Um, but the thing is, is that at least definitely starting off, what since since live action anime is still so new, um, you, you need to avoid that a little bit, just so people can at least yeah. accept it, can get, can get over the idea of, okay, this is a Japanese story but I'm okay with it because it's still just really really awesome you know mm-hmm. once, once they can kind of accept that live action anime works then you can start to work in a little bit more stuff and yeah. and whatnot so yeah so what do you have any specific so, examples of animation <laughs> techniques that you were turning into live action techniques um, let's see off the top of my head it's um, the, the biggest thing has been definitely kind of like the, the, the story quality that, that was kind of the, the the big thing that we wanted to bring over in terms of animation techniques um, definitely the the framing for one yeah. like anime style framing is, oh, is very yeah. unique I mean let's it's just it's, it's very, very epic. it's very epic it's very dynamic anime. yeah yeah you know it's just like uh, I keep on thinking have you guys seen a kill a kill no. 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 Okay. Kill a Kill is uh. This is kind of like like super you know in a nutshell type of thing. But it's like uh, Dragon Ball Z but with girls kind of. Mm. 
<laughs> it's uh, in, yeah. in 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 a nutshell. I mean, that's that's like super super like uh, simplifying it. But I mean, yeah, I you know, you, you have that. plenty you have plenty of animes. What I was trying to get at, at least, is you've got plenty of animes that they the, the framing, for instance, just just the way things are shown inside of the camera is amazing. It's very dynamic. Uh, One Piece does that a lot too, actually, uh, especially with like like the the stretchy rubber fists and everything mm-hmm. like that. You know, Luffy. Yeah. It's um, One Piece it, fan. <laughs> it's a big One Piece fan. Yeah. yeah. And um, so are the guys from Chris Chris Born. Born. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, sweet. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Love but you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and so, 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 de- framing is definitely a part of it. Um, anime style action, I love, absolutely love, and it's very unique. I mean, that's something that I feel like the the Rurouni Kenshin movies did amazingly. Yeah. I mean, regardless of whether they like the story or not, because some people feel like it changed too much, but um, I, I thought it was okay. Uh, but the thing is, the action definitely in those movies they capture the anime feel really well. Just like yeah. th- these are like you know, right. these are just over the top champions, really going going toe to toe here. People that are faster than each other, stronger than each other, and everything. Set designs amazing. Amazing wardrobe yes. is amazing. Wardrobe, yeah, costume, costuming, obviously, definitely, especially with yeah. magical girls. I mean, mm-hmm. that's you, you need to have some yeah. pretty, pretty cool costumes and weapons, weapons especially. Yeah, and the big uh, thing in the cartoons, um, cartoons and anime, is that that's what when you think about it, that's what's going to, I guess, give the audience the difference between the characters. Mm-hmm. That's why cartoon characters never change their clothes. You know, Charlie yeah. Brown wears that shirt. You mm-hmm. know, you know that Aladdin wears what he has you know right and right you you know you feel like in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Base seven like you know like these these, out, these outfits and mm-hmm. um, yeah and they become iconic that way they, yeah. yeah exactly yeah it's it's kind of crazy because if you think about it a lot of the characters faces in anime and cartoons like they look very similar especially if it's the same artist that's doing them like, mm-hmm. they look so it can get kind of confusing if you're constantly changing the outfits and stuff. There's like something that. Matt Groening said, the guy who makes Simpsons and Futurama. He said, uh, the best way to design a cartoon character is to have it be identifiable from its silhouette. It's like, if you can identify huh. the character from its silhouette, then you, like, did a good job. Uh, like, Homer, you can tell, bald head, couple of hairs, like, gut, you know, yeah, Bart's got belly, the spiky yeah. hair. <laughs> like, Fry, Leela, they're all, like, Bender, obviously, that's super awesome. mm-hmm. recognizable. Oh, that's pretty cool. And that's, like, that cool. fits in anime, that fits in live action stuff, yeah. too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially with, like, the weapons and the costuming and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Make them, like, that way, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. cloud. <laughs> yeah. Giant sword, yeah. You see a silhouette of a dude with spiky hair and a <laughs> giant buster sword, I mean, that's, that's cloud. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Chris Born Saga. Yeah, Thank that's you. A great question. Um, you know what? I did think of one movie that did anime like style. It's more kung fu, oh, but give it to me. Kill Bill, dude. Oh, Kill, yeah. Bill. Kill Bill. Yeah, Kill Bill was like pretty damn Bill? good in that. I love. Yeah. Like, I was thinking Kill about Bill, characters yeah. with different weapons and stuff, and I was like, oh yeah. They and I just went, watched it like two weeks ago. They even went as far as to have an anime. Exactly. Section, which is mm-hmm. one of the best sections yeah. of that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love the action scene too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, Kill Pretty Bill. Cool. Yeah. So <laughs> twisted. <dude. laughs> yeah. That's the thing is like Kill Bill. It definitely feels like it's inspired like from from anime from from the eighties and nineties, like like Ninja Scroll and stuff like that. Yeah. That you know, it's just like it's one cut and then psh, you know, like blood squirting out like like at a hundred psi, you know, or yeah. even crazier. So and it's like not <laughs> clearly not even close to looking like blood, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that'd be a great example of something that's really stylized, but people select it anyway, you know? Exactly. And yeah. so. But I mean, you got to have that street cred. The that's true. Tarantino. Tarantino's cut. Like it like, yeah. It's really, like, Kill that's Bill. true. I've never met anyone who's like, yeah, Kill Bill's all right. Mm-hmm. It's really like, yeah, oh, yeah, right. that movie's That's awesome. a love it or hate like, it movie. No, I for sure. I don't like that at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I've never met anybody that was like, uh, yeah, the movie's okay. Yeah, I can watch it. It's that. all right. Yeah. It's like, you want to watch Kill Bill? Dude, yeah. Let's put that's most of Tarantino's movies, I think, too. Yeah. Except for, like, Pulp Fiction is probably mm-hmm. the most, like, well... Well, no. Generally yes, accepted. Have you seen Pulp Fiction? Fiction. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Go home, Gabe. Have you seen Reservoir Dogs? Yeah. It's Please, it's Reservoir Dogs. Okay, okay, good. Have <laughs> you seen Glorious Bastards? Of course. Have you seen Django? Yes, of course. Okay. Django <laughs> might be my favorite. I freaking love Django. Uh, Django's up there for me, dude. The cinematography in that movie is like... <laughs> It was amazing. Dude, by the way, did you guys see the trailer? Excellent. The trailer for the Hateful, Hateful Eight. Eight just, yeah. Just really. It just. Now. Yeah. I did not so, see that. Dude, oh, <laughs> it okay. looks good. So, and yeah. I was yeah. telling everybody, all of my friends. By the way, I'm gonna gloat right now to all my friends. Mm-hmm. Right? All my friends are like, dude, they're not making the Hateful Eight movie. I'm like, my friends in LA who are like a part mm-hmm. of the scene. I'm like, dude, I'm up on date with that stuff. I promise you, they are like, no. Because the script got leaked and like oh, he doesn't yeah. want to make it anymore, and I'm like, dude, I follow I his website. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He keeps posting pictures of him working on the movie. Like, nope, not Sweet. happening. Mm-hmm. Boom. Trailer no, just there you go. Joke, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, it's, it's funny that we're talking about that because one, one of the big inspirations for Frangelic Magica too was was Reservoir Dogs. Mm. Reservoir Dogs. It was just um, just kind of like that idea of like it. Um, yeah, 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 definitely. Thank you, thank you. It was, it was one, one, of, one of the ideas, one of the things that I loved about, Res- about Reservoir Dogs is just that like the whole thing takes place in the warehouse, you know, like where they're just trying to figure out what's going on and then you cut out of it using flashbacks. And that's definitely, uh, that's kind of like the, the, the format of Angelic Magica too is that, you know, all of it takes place in this warehouse. Well, you know, a good 90% of it takes place in the warehouse and from there we cut out of it and find out about the people uh, through flashbacks and then obviously like it all comes together at the end. And, oh, I love it. Yeah. That's so. <laughs> Okay, next question is from at Jesse Games with two Z's. Jesse just Games like, asked like a lot of questions on the show. Thanks. Um, cool. Or girl. During your visual creation process, did you watch a lot of anime films or did you try to stay away from outside influences? Ooh, that's a good one, actually. Mm. Yeah. It's, um, while creating it, the thing is, is like, um, I think while I create anything, I don't think I could probably stop watching anime because I'm just too big of an anime nerd, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, for for the most part, it was um, it was kind of interesting because I just had the I had the idea for for Angelic Magica. It came to me pretty pretty quickly, honestly. It was just the concept kind of occurred to me one day. I was just like you know like oh so what would happen if dot 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 and then just kind of grew from there really. Yeah. And um, and yeah, I've never been one to like flat out be like no no this has got to be like 100 percent mine. You know like it can't be it can't be inspired by anything because at the end of the day nothing really is 100% original like like literally everything has been inspired by other things there's the whole like the the, the theory of the monomyth and whatnot that all stories come from from one story or that there's eight you know basic stories that everything follows it's just you know the way you tell it and how you tell it that becomes unique and different and um, and so yes, yeah, so I I, uh, I didn't really mind watching other stuff and you know finding other ideas because especially when you're starting off like we are you know you you want to get inspired you want to you want to find inspiration from the greats really. Such a humble dude, man. I, I applaud <laughs> you for that. No, oh, thank you, thank yeah, you. No, that's awesome. You know, like you get you get those people that are just like, no, this is like everything I created it all you know? <laughs> I created the world in fact you know so that's, that's yeah. really cool when I when I go in to write music and I think we agree on this too is um, I try to surround myself with as much music as possible mm-hmm. uh, definitely I do like a feast or famine nice. thing like I listen to a lot of music and then I listen to nothing like I just drive mm-hmm. around in my car in silence that's what I mean yeah. and then I'm uh, stuff starts to I come have in. like different yeah. periods different MMOs, that, that's you know? when you're decluttering too yeah and exactly then, mm-hmm. yeah. interesting yeah, interesting kind of just come in like a melody yeah. and be like oh that's cool Mm-hmm. I've been listening ah, nice. to that when I get home. I've been oh, listening, nice. listening to a lot of like Russian, uh, Eastern European music lately. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! And it's and we're, I'm recording right now a full length album, and it's like bleeding in. It's like subconsciously mm-hmm. like yeah. found its way <laughs> into the studio, and I'm like, but I like it that way. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. it's not wow. all I've been listening to, but I have been listening to a lot of it. And I've yeah. just been looking at the songs that we're kind of recording right now, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like just yeah. the style and. I don't know. It's really cool. And just mm-hmm. big and hearty and yeah, weather <laughs> beaten. <laughs> I think that's good. I yeah. think you should surround yourself with what's current and what's mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. You should have like a healthy mixture of, of both. You know? Yeah, because oh, they they say uh you know get inspired to inspire. So exactly. naturally mm-hmm. you want to really yeah, good saying, surround yeah. yourself with. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I like that. Hey, yeah. yeah. And then that's us. Down, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> we should put that in my phone. Yeah. What What do you guys, or what did you guys watch to be inspired for this thing? Or like, what are some of your favorite anime? What are both of some of your favorite anime? Yeah, good question. Yeah, okay. I say the Yamishibai, like because of the 2D. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay, so yeah, the, the, there were, there was a lot. I mean, I think I think the the, the first off, like the, the most obvious one was uh, was uh, Polamaji Madoka Magica, mm. which is um, that's. Uh, for, for people who don't who haven't heard of it, it's kind of like the the Evangelion of uh, of magical girl shows. Oh wow! Cool. So it's just with with all of like the mind bending like you know WTFness of it. It's it's amazing. I, I love the show. It's it's, it's very it's, it's another WTF-ness, like um, WTFness man. Yeah, That's WTFness. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard out Urban Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that one in there. <laughs> oh man, yeah. And um, it's like uh, it, um, Madoka Magica is very much like Evangelion. That it's very much of a love love, or, love it or hate it show too. But I, I absolutely loved it, and that kind of um, just kind of uh, that was one of my big uh, entry points in, into the magical girl genre, and so I just kind of kept that in mind. That's actually kind of where, where the title Angelic Magical comes from, mm. uh, kind of keeping the, the whole magical feel, magical yeah. feel to it. Um, outside of that, I mean, so that kind of inspired this whole idea of you know these magical girls in a dark story. Outside of that, there, there's plenty of other things too, like um, Yami Shibai, which is like um, that's a lesser known one, but it came up pretty recently. It's like a whole bunch of short uh, short horror uh, animes. It's only five minutes long actually but they're so freaking good it's, it's actually one of those things 
that would like literally be rated PG-13 or R, even though there's no gore, there's no violence or blood or anything like that, just because of how intense it is. Wow. It's so freaking, especially the first season. Yeah. And um, they're done in a really interesting way because it's all it's all 2D, obviously, but it's done in a, it's done in a very very uh, restricted animation style. It's it's almost like like these paper cutouts, almost like if you could imagine like a realistic a more realistic version of South Park, kind of like a sort of like jerky movements. Yeah. But the jerkiness of it just makes it feel even more uh, otherworldly and other uh, just more unnatural. I gotta check that out. And dude, it's really good. Definitely check it out. Yamishibai. It's uh the, the first season especially. Second one is okay, but first 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 one especially is Are really they, like, good. Actually scary. Like, dude, yeah, no, no. It's it, stuff. no, like so, some of those. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> no, because like to be, like I said, to be inspired, you need to get like inspired. So I was yeah. like, okay, uh, he was sharing some stories, and we we're like, okay, so let's watch this. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, uh, as much as I, I was involved in in horror films before, I, I'm not a, a, a huge fan. Of watching at him a horse, so yeah. yeah. I horse, like, a whole it's, it's, it's intense. It's just it's intense. intense. Yeah, yeah so it's, it'll mess with your head. Like. It's psychologically disturbing mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. American, American horses are all just like we're gonna <laughs> slash you. Yeah. Japanese mm -hmm. yeah. 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 like you're gonna. You're gonna, You're gonna like, think about it a whole life. Months. Yeah, because it <laughs> yeah. slowly it, it like taunts you or mm -hmm. haunts you. And, and there's always something you. about the story itself too that leaves you thinking about it, and you're just like, oh god, relates, oh god. It relates <laughs> to you somehow. Right. Every yeah. Japanese horror film I've ever seen, I like I connect to one of the characters in a way yeah like mm -hmm. wow like that's everyone's been in that situation everyone's had that yeah like it's yeah it's, it might be because of that I mean I feel like it, it builds off of really really simple universal fears and they just right. make they just up it to 11 at that point you know I say <laughs> yeah. something like you know having that feeling of like someone's watching you yeah. you know and then then they just build that into a story and yeah. then when you go home you're just like oh my god oh my god someone's watching me man like, yeah the one they're working on right now um, the Spider one? The team that did Grudge You? Or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, Grudge. Yeah, the Grudge. Yeah. Yeah. They're working on, um, I forget what it's called, but it's like, it's taking from like arachnophobia. It's a Japanese horror film. Mm -hmm. They're like that. filming right now, and it's going to be taking from like arachnophobia and like. Oh my goodness. I just, I, from what I've heard, it's going to be like horror. And that's one of my biggest fears is spiders. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. It's going to hate spiders. You don't like spiders? <laughs> yeah. I'm so fine. I can't wait to see it, of course. Let's watch it together because I'm not afraid of spiders at all. I love spiders. That'd be really cool. I'd be like, I think they're again. cute. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys heard the comic? It's the. It's called like the. I don't remember. The, it's like the name of a town and then the fault. It's like a. Oh, the. the, the, the I'm a Mia fault. Are you talking yes. about the one where like the, 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 cuts out, the, cut out, the stone cutouts of people? Yeah. I was just telling her about oh it on the, dr on the drive over. That's what you're making. Dude, yeah, right Junji now. Ito. That, it is oh my so god. I good. just read that literally like a week ago. And oh man, that just left it's me like disturbed. Too. I'm with you, sis. It's like, it's like 30 minutes. It's yeah. 30 minutes of your life. I'm probably going to stay away from it. <laughs> oh, <it's>... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm god. It's more like strange oh and disturbing gosh. than it is like yeah. scary. But yeah. It's also like the whole buildup of everything mm -hmm. is pretty scary. It's it sounds so traumatic. Really, really yeah. good, though. And it's you'd be like in excruciating pain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, okay, so I, we should probably explain uh, because I don't remember the full title of it but it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of like it's a uh, Japanese comic Fault F-A-U-L-T you will find it so, yeah, I'm a Mia Fault I feel it's like something, something like, like the, the, the curious I think it's Junji Ito I think is the name of the guy who, who wrote it and I can't he remember. also does a lot more horror comics too that are really yeah. good yeah, he wrote Gyo yeah. I remember Gyo I, remember, I do remember he that was one of the ones that he wrote um, but yeah just look it up so. yes it's yeah. really good so and freaking good if you like scary stuff go check it out yeah um yeah. Great okay, stuff. Back to Twitter question. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So, so the, the, um, yeah, yeah. So the other stuff that inspired? Inspiration, yeah. Inspired. Uh, in terms of anime, yeah. Basically, uh, Madoka Magica, Yamishibai, um, uh, the other stuff. Um, Sailor Moon? A little bit of Sailor Moon. I mean, just for the whole Magical Girl magical feel girl. to it. Sure. Your a bit more. This is really good, by the way, too, with, your, with the Magical Girls inside this world because I noticed that it's like they're so bright and hopeful and the world that they're in is so dark mm -hmm. and I just love that contrast it's yeah. like you see it's like you know who the heroes are I love being able to like know who the heroes are mm -hmm. like I mean no. some people like anti-heroes I like my heroes I like anti-heroes too but I like yeah I want to get behind them like, mm -hmm. yeah it's good <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah just get, get into root for them is nice yeah, yeah. So. that's why you like Captain America dude 
He's a hero's hero. Ooh. Oh, there yeah. you go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Show off his tats, guys. <laughs> we just have an episode where we just go through your tats. You say that every couple Do of I? Episodes. Yeah. I'll yeah, get like one of those it. like old old school teacher pointer oh. sticks and I'll be like, here we have Captain <laughs> America's shield. That's it's gonna fair. be X rated though. Yeah. <laughs> I'll blur it out. It'll be fine. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Okay, next question is from at Blinky Fried My Bender. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's a great. That's speaking of graining, dude. Blinky from Simpsons, the Three Eyed Fish, <laughs> ride like Fry, and then Bender. <laughs> Bender. Great man. Blinky fried my oh, Bender. Futurama. Yeah. We'll fry and Bender. Oh, Futurama. Blinky, Simpsons. I didn't even catch that. Oh dang. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, you got that's good. Cool. A Futurama fan on your hands here. So. <laughs> Uh, your characters look great, both illustrated and live action. They translate very well into the big screen. But what came first, the character or the sketch? Character Is that like sketch. the chicken or the egg? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, did you did you write the character and then sketch it and design the well, character? You said you worked on it for two years. Right? It's, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 what it was first was definitely the the design first. I mean, I, I had a pretty clear idea of what they were going to look like. Uh, yeah. pr- pretty early on, actually, just just because of you know how much thought you have to put into to the outfit, to the to the to the weapon, and um, and so yeah, I had a pretty solid idea of what they were going to look like. That's interesting. Um, in terms of the, uh, the the sketches, that was something that we we got made for the for the film. Yeah, and so we were able to kind of uh, to kind of line that up with with the actors we had in mind too, and so just just to kind of get that sort of uh, that sort of parallel really, so people can kind of see you know like okay well this is how they'd look like you know anime version this or anime sort of influence, and then you know this is how they they work like in real life because uh, for, for a lot of people even anime fans when you describe it to them a lot of people can't really acknowledge or, or imagine even how do you translate anime into live action, yeah. and so having you know flat out all right so here's anime here's live action you know it's the same character. Character, you can see how how it translates. That was what that was one of the big things that we wanted to get over. And so it's it's literally it takes it takes a second. You can see they, they look exactly the same. So mm-hmm. there you go. <laughs> really cool. Did you design the characters before you wrote like their backstories and all that kind of stuff? Did you say like this is the kind of weapon this character is going to have? This is what they're going to look like? And then you went back and said this is the significance of all this stuff. Like I want her to have a weapon of a hypodermic needle. So <laughs> uh, she had to have done drugs <laughs> in her past. <laughs> or was it the other way around? Yeah. Um, it was. It was kind of the other way around actually I mean I just kind of had an idea in terms of uh, I mean they, they really become like a, like a family of magical girls really and so I kind of had that as, as my basis really so I said okay so it's, it's a family of these four girls really we've got Angel who's, who's definitely the lead and she, she's the newest addition to the family so who else would have to be part of this this family of magical girls really to, to kind of ease her into it to kind of make her feel welcome and to just kind of uh, help complete it to make them feel like a, like a really solid team and so from there that just kind of it kind of grew from there I mean, obviously, I wanted to make some some references to like to, to the classic magical girl stuff. So, for instance, that's re- that's the reason why we had Mika re- originally to, to be so young. Mm-hmm. You know, I did want to have at least one one of the young young girls there. As for the other ones, I mean, I just kind of thought it was just kind of keeping it realistic, really. I mean, th- thinking realistically, um, there's only so long you can have 14 year old girls fighting against demons. You know, before yeah, they yeah. they lose it mentally or before uh, before they die. And so I figured, well, you know, good a good age range would be that that 18. You know, like or like a high, high school age, really, uh, for for most of the, the veteran girls, the girls that have been around for a while, that have lived a long time, mm-hmm. and so from there, just kind of evolved from there, and, and just right. kind of. And then went we sent out really. the character descriptions as well as the um, actors, mm-hmm. actors' uh, photos, actors' yeah. headshots, uh, to the concept artist in Japan. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's really cool. So it's mm-hmm. done by a Japanese artist named Imagraphics. That's why it looks so authentic. <laughs> yeah, thanks, really, thanks. Yeah, I love the art. Thank you. So good. Yeah, yeah, he did such a, an incredible yeah, job. He, he, uh, we, we found out about his stuff because of his uh, Crusher Joe drawings, actually. If you guys have heard of, heard of that, heard of that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have? Yeah. So oh, my actually, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so thanks to that, we were able to find out about it. And it was, um, and yeah, I mean, just, just the stuff that yes. he's made is great. And so, uh, you know, just uh, thanks to Arena's connections, really, we, we, uh, we got him on board. <laughs> my, uh, my mother. Um, does voiceover for Crusher Joe's nice. Japanese. Uh, her, she's doing the uh, voice for Alfin, so that's why she nice. was she was looking at what we're doing, mm-hmm. and then said, um, uh, "Let's see, um, let's see who's drawing uh, or style and a tone that they that they would do yeah. would match with what you guys are doing." Yeah. And so I was very grateful for her because. Uh, 
that really worked out in the, in the it, it project. It really did. It really did. Yeah, yeah we're, this, we're very blessed with our team. Mm -hmm. Concept artist, DP, casts, they're very, yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> thank so. you, thank you. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> thank like you very a much. testament to quality of your product, though, is that like, people talented want people want to be part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you thank have a crappy you. product, you have to like beg people to do <laughs> stuff. But All right. like, oh, I want to do this. Like, yeah. well, Thanks really for finding cool. me, guys. Yeah. No, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, last question is from at DeathBatChick423. Angelic Magica is a really cool name. Besides anime, what are some of your what are some of your other influences? Ah, uh, yes. That's a good question, too. That's cool. Yeah, well, we did cover a little bit of it, but just kind of kind of to recap. Um, one of the big ones was uh, was uh, Silent Hill, and uh, and by that extension, uh, Jacob's Ladder. I like, you're hitting me. <laughs> was I telling you about Jacob's Ladder? And you were like, wait, Silent Hill's based on a movie? Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, yeah, you're coming back from LA. And yep. I was like, yeah, it's kind of like a messed up movie. Yeah. Dude, watch it. Jacob's Ladder is so good. It's, it's really so really good. good. Yeah, if you've ever wondered, like, the, like Jacob's Ladder is like what I was hoping the Silent Hill movies would be like, yeah. because it's like it's like, man. And psychological. The psycho, yeah, the but, Silent but, but Hill movie? yeah, Silent Hill movies. Yeah. They're like, supposed yeah. to make another one. Like, really? Oh, well, if, if they reboot it, I mean, I hope they, I hope they do better. Honestly, I, I really do, because there's so much potential there. Yeah. There's so much potential. Yeah, I, I love yeah, the I stories. Down with the movies. No, the movie sucks. Uh, <laughs> there's movies. Yeah. Okay. They, they made two. Well, yeah. I know about the other one. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I, I feel like they, they got the ambience right, like the ambience and the feel of the world. Dang. They, they got that pretty good. I but... didn't like that they made it smoke instead of uh, mist, though. Yeah. It made it feel. Yeah. Like, just watching it felt dry, you know. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, I always picture it like cool and like like moist. I don't know, mm -hmm. just like the feel. I don't know, it felt more Mad Maxi than it felt You're Silent Hill. You're seriously it, actually. like, this is his like, I love G spot. Silent Hill. Dude, that's Silent awesome. Had, like, <laughs> video game yeah. love. So. That's, that's my A spot, my A spot. Um, Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah it was, um, I mean, so, so especially Silent Hill too. I mean, that was uh, just, just kind of like everything that happens with Pyramid Head and the nurses and whatnot, how they're all the representation. Oh, so spoilers, I guess, for, for you know, a, a, a game that came out 15 years ago. <laughs> the, 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 movie, the, the game that came out, how, how long ago now? <laughs> 10 years? Was it 2001 or something? Dude, is it 14 years? Oh my god. So. The game? I'm trying to remember what, like, what. No way. It was. No, it's. Dude, it's, it, it, was it, was it was Dreamcast. It was, it was Dreamcast, I feel like. like. I had it on, I had it on Xbox, mm -hmm. and I had, like, okay. one that had additional content on I'm it. I'm find out right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We, we gotta find this out. Yeah. The female character at the end. You can like mm -hmm. replay everything. You guys are talking awesome. about the PS2 version. There's also a PS2 version. Yeah. I'm talking about the PS1 version. That was Silent uh, Hill 1. No, or, uh, Silent Hill 2 was, was the biggest inspiration for it, so. Yeah. Silent Hill 2? Yeah. Okay, that was definitely 2000s. Oh. Yeah, 2000s, the okay. Faceless businessmen. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. The Faceless businessmen were very much inspired by the nurses and whatnot. And For just, sure. um, just kind of like, okay, so so getting back to the spoilers, I mean, just kind of like how, like, uh, m most of Silent Hill 2 just kind of takes place in his mind. Like, the creatures are very yeah. much inspired by, like, you know, so, so Pyramid Head is, like, you know, his anger yeah, and whatnot. And, like, what what he wanted. Oh, yeah. 2000, 2001? Yeah. Dude, yeah. nice. Yeah. It feels like 2001. Nice. I doubt you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was really good. But yeah, just definitely, I mean, like, I, I wanted to bring in that element of just like how how everything everything exists the way it exists for a reason. I mean, Pyramid Head is designed that way because he's a representation of of uh, of, of the main character's anger and whatnot, and if you know like of how he didn't want to feel anything after after his wife passed, yep. and then you know like the, the the nurses, the lust, and like all of that stuff. I, I wanted to bring that into the creatures as well, and just that, that sort of mentality. I mean, that was that was kind of what inspired the. Um, the, the design of the outfits and, and just kind of the world in general and so you know for instance uh, you know so a few more a few more descriptions about the about the uh, about angelic magica you know the, the faces businessmen they're inspired by uh, so this entire you know nightmarish world that they, they they fight in is inspired by this this um it's, it's, it's brought from the, the nightmare of this, of this young girl, actually. It's a young homeless girl that when, when she, she, she's already passed, but when she used to be alive, um, you know, she, she was homeless. She's always begging for food, begging for, for any sort of help, really. And so the things that she, she lived, saw, when she's, that she saw when she was alive, and her, her, her sort of uh, dreams and fears are, are now reflected on this world. You know, so you've got this fake, this obviously fake brick, brick paper wall because it's, she was homeless. You know, it's almost like mocking the sort of life that she lived. Yeah. You know, you've got the teddies because that was her dream to own a teddy bear to own a stuffed animal and now they exist but now they're just out of reach you know they're above they're just out of reach for a young girl to, to grab so and they're all destroyed yeah. yeah and they're all destroyed and messed up they're, they're just taunting her 
cuddle yeah. with Sarah. And they've got so. nails and stuff sticking out of them, and they want to try to eat you and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And the businessmen, I mean, it's, if you guys have ever been to, you know, any any cities downtown during the lunch hour, you just see, you know, just mobs of business businessmen and women just walking back and forth. And yeah. sure enough, if you're spending your life on a corner, you know, they become featureless. They just all become the same, and now they they literally are. Yeah. That's and uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. so thank you. This, yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. I mean, so, that, that, that was the idea, really. I mean, just we just really wanted to bring in that depth. Yeah, the, the set, set design it does, is yeah. purposeful. Oh, yeah, you, you you get to find out. I mean, you, you do get to find out about you know the girl. You, you, I mean, obviously that was a little, little bit of a spoiler because you do get to find out about the girl's backstory, what she's lived through, and whatnot. That's like a teasy and, uh, spoiler. It's easy spoiler. <laughs> yeah. like, the film now goes. There's there's actually a major major uh, conflict later too. So. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when you when you find out who the girl really was uh, and her relationship yes. and why, why she's hunting down this particular group of magical girls as well right it's uh and why they're so dedicated to hunting this particular you know demon down really yeah. it's um everything's tied together everything's connected everything's time to, everything's connected it and better be yeah yeah you go check it out right yeah. stinking mm-hmm. now and yeah seriously <laughs> your um indiegogo the Indiegogo is just look up uh, Angelic Magica on Indiegogo and uh, I mean uh, if you guys want you could probably include a link to it maybe oh, yeah, uh, yeah. okay definitely yeah, I mean, thank you, thank you, yeah. you send us what um, you want like the most important links you want people to know about we'll put them on mm-hmm. so. okay uh, before definitely, definitely. before we end it Tomate uh, mm-hmm. could we <laughs> <laughs> could we uh, say thank yous to the people who yeah, is on Twitter yeah, definitely, okay, definitely. okay. So oh, yeah. show. Yo, I <laughs> no because they they actually took the time no, that to was really it, nice and I'm very grateful for that so I want to make sure that that Dude, I even had some you. more influences to talk about too, if you guys wanted to. But no, it's good. <laughs> but yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh yeah, if, if we're going over, no, no worries. Okay, okay, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, so. At Curseborn so I'll let you. Yeah, you guys do. Do thing. Cool, cool. Thank you. So, so Rena, let's, let's take turns. So, um, at Curseborn Saga. Curseborn Saga. Uh, Rena, take this one. So, at, uh, oh, oh, Jesse Games. Games. At, at Blinky Fried My Blender. Uh, uh, Death, Bad Chick. That's bad chick. Yeah, that's bad chick. Four uh, two four, two, three. So yeah. thank you guys so Ayatollah much for for uh, for giving the questions. Thank you guys. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you guys. So thanks much. for giving us content for our show that we're too lazy to come up with otherwise. <laughs> yeah, no excuses. <laughs> like I said, it was really easy to find Angelic Magica on Google. So if, yeah. if that's like the only thing you can do, if you can't remember any links, whatever, just go right now yep. to Google, type in Angelic Magica. You'll find all their stuff. It's super easy. Um, and you guys saw guys. the trailer. You know how good it is. Yeah, you yeah. know how good this is. Let's make this happen. Let's do it. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thanks so much Excellent. for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. Thank I really you. appreciate Absolutely. it. Bye. Awesome. See ya. Thank you guys for watching the D-Lodge show. Um, Gabe actually went through a, a spiritual transformation uh, since we stopped uh, doing that last segment. He took a vow of silence. Um, yeah, I'm hungry too. We'll get food after this. Um, so he's only going to be writing for... I think he said before, how long are you going to be doing it? Until the next moon rises over the shallow graves of your enemies? That's a pretty weird thing to say. Um, yeah, so Gabe, I, good luck with that. That's strange. What do you... Your dad needs your car after this? I, I don't... Oh, your mom needs your car after this. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching the D-Lodge show, guys. Next week... We're going to have, uh, Gabe told me, he can't tell us right now, but he told me he wants me to talk about my podcast more on this. So, um, we're going to have one of the other co-hosts of my podcast, Battlecast, on next week. Not as the main guest. We're not going to bore you with an hour of talk about Battlecast, but he's going to come on. We're going to talk about what we're doing in season seven right now. Uh, we've been doing that podcast, Battlecast, for about like a year and a half now. It's been going for a while. Oh, you really like Battlecast. And he does the music for it, too. Thank you, Gabe. That's sweet of you, buddy. Um, but you don't like Andy, the guy that's coming on? I didn't... Oh, you really like Andy, the guy that's coming on. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to talk about Battlecast a little bit next week, which is uh, my podcast. And we take characters from different things, anime, movies, comic books, TV shows, video games. And then we do, like, a role-playing battle between them. And I think it's pretty awesome. And... People seem to like it, so yeah, we're gonna talk about it. Um, what? I don't care that you had acne in high school. What does that have to do with this right now? I'm sorry that happened to you. 
I'm really sorry that happened to you, Gabe. Why? I don't know why you would knuck about that. That sounds very traumatic. But um, thank you guys for watching the D-Loud show. And uh, we'll be back next week with more cool stuff. Next week, we're, we're not in L.A. We're down here. We're down here. Okay. The week after that, can we say who we're going to have on? We'll just say we have a, a special guest from IGN coming on in a couple weeks. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Villainous Lair and Meltdown. Wave with me. Help me wave. You can wave still. Waves are silent. Bye, guys. This has been the Digital Lizard of Doom Show live at Meltdown. Meltdown.